After what was the most controversial college football playoff revealing in history, the four teams for the college football playoff this season have been revealed. Michigan, Washington, Texas, and Alabama are in the college football playoff for this 2023 college football season. It all comes down to this. This has been one of the more insane finishes to a season that I can remember. You got Michigan, team who everyone expected to be in this position. They're as complete and as experienced as anybody in the country. Then he got Washington. I feel like most thought he was going to be USC in this position in the preseason, but turns out the Huskies are a 13-0 Pac-12 champion at number two and very much deserved. They're taking on Texas. Team who's headed to the SEC next season, but obviously finishing out their time in the Big 12 strong. Texas, an incredible season for them. First time during the college football playoff, and at number four, none other than Alabama. The Crimson Tide, I feel like, I mean, this team was at number eight in the rankings for what, probably a month and a half, two months, and here they are. Alabama's in the number four position, and I mean, this is one of the few playoffs. I feel like it's been a while uh, since we've seen a situation like this. I feel like any of the four teams in this bracket could win the national championship this season. They've honestly got equal chance, if you ask me at this point. So today I'll be giving you guys my reaction to the college football playoff field, but also uh, the bowl season, which is officially upon us. So with that, let's get started. And for this video as well, I do want to highlight some of the more interesting bowl games uh, that we'll be finding before the New Year's Six as well. And most uh, interesting to me is seeing Jacksonville State, James Madison, both in bowl games, very much deserved, by the way. I feel like these are... Uh, two of your better group of five teams this season. James Madison, honestly, probably would be in that New Year's Six position taking on Oregon if it weren't for them being ineligible for the New Year's Six. And honestly, it's a good thing because, I mean, James Madison and Jacksonville State both technically are ineligible because of their transition from FCS to FBS. Everyone knows this by now. But, I mean, it's it's really good to see both teams in bowl games. Obviously, not enough six and six teams. So, uh, we saw Jacksonville State get in, James Madison, and also... Uh, five and seven Minnesota who are playing Bowling Green in the Quick Lane Bowl. Uh, we got Jacksonville State. They're taking on Louisiana and the New Orleans Bowl. And then he got uh, down the road a little bit. LA Bowl, we got UCLA and Boise State. Uh, UCLA kind of bumpy down the stretch, finished out seven and five. They've got a good matchup against a solid Boise State team. Texas Tech and Cal in the Independence Bowl. Texas Tech uh, finished out the season at uh, six and six, and I feel like they disappointed a bit. Many were expecting the Red Raiders to uh, maybe be a dark horse in the Big 12, and uh, they at least got up to six wins, maybe a bit of a disappointment, but Cal definitely overachieved this season, uh, getting up to six for them. So that's definitely a, a pretty good matchup early on in this bowl season. Then Gasparilla Bowl, Georgia Tech, and UCF. Uh, UCF barely got up to six. Georgia Tech also overachieved a bit this season, had a pretty good year, and they're taking on a pretty good UCF team in the Gasparilla Bowl. Then, of course, Duke in the Birmingham Bowl. That's the thing about some of these bowl games as well. They're not going to be quite as good because you don't have all the starting quarterbacks. Riley Leonard's already in the transfer portal. It sounds like he's going to be headed to Notre Dame. Uh, that's obviously not official yet, but that's definitely – uh, some reasonable speculation at this point, and uh, we'll be covering the transfer portal and everything uh, as the offseason approaches here. And obviously, the transfer portal is I mean, we're in early December, and there's already a lot of big names in the transfer portal just today. Dylan Gabriel and uh, Kyle McCord both uh, just joined it, but yeah, Duke against Troy in the Birmingham Bowl, not going to be quite as good of a matchup with no Riley Leonard. Uh, but obviously, it's been tough on him this season with his injuries. But then he got your Armed Forces Bowl. There's James Madison taking on a solid Air Force team. And then Northwestern and Utah. This is an interesting one in the Las Vegas Bowl. Northwestern, considering where they were in this past offseason, I would say 7-5 and five is really good for Northwestern. Technically, they finished out fifth in the Big Ten. If you look at everybody stacked up against each other, so, I mean, Northwestern, a really impressive season. I feel like the future is actually pretty bright for them at this current point. I mean, we especially, even in the first half of this season, they just looked like a train wreck. Uh, they really came around down the stretch. So give huge credit to you know, the Wildcats coaching staff. And they're taking on Utah on the other side. The team have finished 8-4. And, and Utah will probably be the favorite there. I mean, it's been kind of a disappointment that for them this season as well with no Cam Rising. But you know, that's definitely a good matchup for uh, both teams there and definitely impressive for Northwestern. Then you got Minnesota Bowling Green. Obviously, Minnesota, the one uh, five and seven team to get into bowl season. There they are. And then you got Kansas and UNLV in the guaranteed Ray Bowl. Kansas, really good season for them, getting up to eight wins and then taking on a pretty good UNLV team. Maybe some Kansas fans might be disappointed by this 
uh, maybe hoping for a better matchup. But either way, that could be a pretty a pretty solid matchup for both teams there. And then he got the Dukes Mayo Bowl, North Carolina and West Virginia. North Carolina in four on the season. Uh, West Virginia really was actually a solid team as well, getting up to eight wins. Uh, they definitely were a bit of a surprise team this season. So you got North Carolina, a team who was in the top 10 uh, for a couple of weeks this season, kind of fell off down the stretch. Uh, just a couple of really tough losses that this team took in particular. Uh, you think about the Virginia game and the Georgia Tech game. And if they did win both those matchups, which they definitely should have, I mean, you can't help but think, where would North Carolina be? at this current point but either way pretty solid match for both teams there west virginia especially a huge opportunity taking on drake may and north carolina and then military bowl tulane and virginia tech tulane man that's that's really tough to lose in their conference championship they were in that position uh, to be in the new year's six but turns out yeah uh, they're stuck in the military bowl taking on six and six virginia tech then your holiday bowl louisville and usc louisville had a bad showing in the acc title game couldn't get anything going offensively uh, but they've got a pretty good matchup taking on USC. Sounds like Caleb Williams is out for that matchup. Uh, so that's going to be not as quite of an interesting matchup as it could have been. Uh, but either way, a nice matchup for both teams there. And then Texas Bowl, Oklahoma State and Texas A&M. Obviously, the Aggies um, fired Jimbo Fisher. And uh, so they're moving on to a new era, finished out this season at 7-5. and five, So kind of a disappointment, uh, but a nice match of them, taking on 9-4 and four, Oklahoma State. Your Fenway Bowl, Boston College and SMU. SMU, honestly, I think that they should have been in the New Year's Six instead of Liberty. And, I mean, it's so tough to keep a 13-0 Liberty team out. But the truth is, Liberty, I think, I mean, there's a stat out there. They've got the worst uh, strength of schedule of anybody in the FBS this season. I mean, yeah, they're 13-0, but they took on hardly anybody good. So, I mean, good for the Flames getting to the New Year's Six. But it, honestly, I know SMU is a two-loss team, but I feel like if you put SMU against Liberty, SMU would win. They were impressive this past week against Tulane. Uh, so, but either way, a nice match for them taking on Boston College, even though uh, SMU probably, they probably should be a heavy favorite there. They are uh, probably the best team in the group of five, I would say. But obviously, you know, I got to put a 13-0 Liberty team in there. And then your pinstripe bowl, we got Rutgers in Miami, Florida. Nice season for Rutgers. They started 6-2, six and two, finished 6-6. Six and six. They haven't won a game in a long time. Uh, but taking on a Miami team who is uh, halfway decent, 7-5 and five in the ACC this season. Uh, maybe disappointed a bit down the stretch. But especially Rutgers, I can imagine they'll be excited for that matchup. Pop-Tarts Bowl, Kansas State, and NC State. We got K-State who... Uh, took a tough loss to Iowa State to finish out the regular season, but this is still a really solid 8-4 team. Probably, you can make an argument they're the best four-loss team in the country. Um, so a big match for them taking on NC State, who honestly could have been in the Relia Quest Bowl. I was surprised that uh, they ended up in this one, considering Wisconsin is only a 7-5 and five team. But for NC State, 9-3, and three, that should be a Pretty good matchup there. Definitely want to keep an eye on. Alma Bowl, Oklahoma and Arizona. This is, I would say, the best matchup outside of the New Year's Six. You get Arizona finished at 9-3. and three. This team has been red hot down the stretch. Ever since Fafita came in, they have been a really strong team on both sides of the ball, really. But for Oklahoma on the flip side, they finished at 10-2, and two, missed out on the Big 12 title game because of their loss to Oklahoma State down the stretch. But a really nice matchup there. Two teams playing yeah, pretty well right now and definitely are worthy of being in the New Year's Six this season. And then you got Kentucky and Clemson in the Gator Bowl. Clemson really came around down the stretch, finished out 8-4. and four, Still a disappointment of a season, but uh, got a nice chance taking on Kentucky 7-5 and five in the Gator Bowl. Then your Sun Bowl. Oregon State and Notre Dame, another situation where the transfer portal kind of is affecting a matchup. Oregon State is without DJ Uyangalale, who's in the transfer portal. And even for Oklahoma, no more Dylan Gabriel. He's in the transfer portal as well. So that, kind of, that does kind of put a damper on things. But uh, definitely, either way, I saw a matchup taking on Notre Dame uh, for Oregon State in the Sun Bowl. Liberty Bowl, Memphis, and Iowa State. Nice season for the Cyclones getting up to seven wins. They are a bit of a surprise this season as well. And then Music City Bowl, Maryland and Auburn. Auburn got up to six wins, Maryland up to seven. Obviously, Auburn coming off of that brutal loss to Alabama. You still think about what could have been because that fourth and 31, if Alabama doesn't get that play like they probably shouldn't have, I mean, Alabama's not in the college football playoff right now, and Auburn is uh, obviously sitting at 7-5 and five with their huge win in the Iron Bowl. So, I mean, that game and that play was significant to the season, uh, really, and so it turns out Auburn's playing 
a halfway decent Maryland team in the Music City Bowl, and then Arizona Bowl, Wyoming, and Toledo. Moving on to some of your higher end bowl games, the Citrus Bowl, Iowa, and Tennessee. All right, well, obviously 10 and 3 on the season after their loss to Michigan in the Big Ten title game, but I mean, I don't know how this is a 10-win team here in Iowa. Their offense, they don't have an offense. That's that's pretty much how you can say it for Iowa. I mean, they scored nothing on Michigan. and I mean, it was kind of the same story when they took on Penn State earlier in the season. Couldn't score a point. And even in a lot of matches where they've taken on less than good defenses in the Big Ten, they've only scored 10 to 15, and they found a way to win because of their defense. So, I mean, Iowa's defense is tough. That's going to be the main problem for Tennessee is if they can score points. But if Tennessee can score 20 points in that game, they probably have, you know, they probably have the win down against Iowa there. And Tennessee, a nice season for them, getting up to 8-4. Obviously not the uh, the same level as as last year when they made it to the Orange Bowl, but uh, still a nice matchup in the Citrus Bowl here. Then Relia Quest Bowl, got Wisconsin and LSU. Wisconsin kind of surprised they're in this position uh, considering they're 7-5 and five and it could have been like a 9-3 NC State team, but either way, good matchup for them taking on LSU, number 13 team in the country out of the SEC. Now for the New Year's Six, the Cotton Bowl, Iowa State and Missouri. What a season for Mizzou. This team, I expected them to be good, but I didn't think they're going to be this good. They're a 10-2 team heading into the postseason, and uh, they're taking on one of the top powers of the Big Ten in Ohio State. Obviously, Ohio State's without Kyle McCord. That definitely evens out the matchup a bit. I feel like Missouri's offense is definitely capable of competing up against Ohio State's defense, uh, but obviously for the Buckeyes, not having Kyle McCord, uh, that's going to be interesting to see how they can still perform offensively. But either way, this game could be a shootout. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a higher scoring one. Uh, definitely want to keep an eye on here for the Cotton Bowl. Orange Bowl, Florida State and Georgia. Uh, Florida State being left out of the college football playoff. The way I see it, I mean, Florida State isn't a top four team in the country. But the reason why you keep Florida State in at number three or even number four is because they finished out 13-0 and as the ACC champion. It just seems like the right thing to do, even though... The committee sees the right thing to do as putting in the four best teams in the country. In Florida State with no Jordan Travis, the way their offense played in the ACC title game, I just don't have much confidence in them, and that's the reason why Florida State was left out. But, I mean, once again, there's arguments on both sides. It's so tough because it's the right thing putting Florida State in into the college football playoff because they're already number four, and, I mean, they finished out 13-0. They're the ACC champion. It makes perfect sense to put them in the college football playoff, but once again, I just don't think, I mean, the committee puts in the four best teams, and I think that they made the right decision there, but obviously for Florida State, it just sucks because, I mean, you have such a successful season just for it to amount to nothing because of an injury to your starting quarterback. But, I mean, it's it's really tough. You can go both sides on it, and they're taking on Georgia. Still a nice matchup in the Orange Bowl for them. What an opportunity they have taking on Georgia, the back-to-back -back national champions. And even for Georgia, to drop from one to six, after losing by three to Alabama and being the powerhouse that they've been all season, you can make an argument Georgia should have still been in as well. That's just how controversial this top four was. And honestly, I really wish that the 12-team playoff started this season because it would have would have been perfect timing for it. Florida State and Georgia both very much. I mean, you look at how Georgia played in the regular season and down the stretch. It's honestly stunning that they lost in the SEC championship game, the way they played against their better teams this season. So, I mean, this past weekend was chaos, as we know it, for college football. And, I mean, this is a great matchup in the Orange Bowl for sure, even though, obviously, both teams are thinking about what could have been if they were in the college football playoff this season. Beach Bowl, Penn State and Ole Miss, two teams that finished out at 10-2 and two on the season. Uh, really even matchup here. Two teams that have had successful seasons. Penn State pretty much third place in the Big Ten. Ole Miss pretty much fourth place in the SEC. Uh, definitely a matchup to keep an eye on here. Then your Fiesta Bowl. Oregon and Liberty, I honestly am surprised that Oregon uh, got put into this bowl game. I thought it maybe would have been you know, Ole Miss or even Penn State, but turns out Oregon's in the Fiesta Bowl taking on Liberty and Oregon as they will be. They're going to be a heavy favorite in this matchup. Liberty's 13-0, but I just I don't really have much faith in Liberty. I feel like, I mean, maybe they... Maybe they turn out to surprise. And we've seen that in a lot of New Year's Six games. Uh, the group of five team that's in there tends to keep it close and they surprise and maybe even pull the upset. But Liberty is just not that good of a team despite being 13-0. I really struggled putting them in my top 25, even being 13-0, which is something that's uh, not something I typically do. But 
Oregon, I mean, for them, they probably deserve better than the Fiesta Bowl, but either way, a solid matchup here, especially for Liberty. Rose Bowl, your college football playoff semifinal. The first one, we got Michigan and Alabama. This is tough draw for Michigan. They've lost in the college football playoff semis two straight years. Uh, lost to George a couple of years ago, then TCU last season. Crazy to think TCU is not even in a bowl game this year. But Michigan, number one, very much deserving of being number one. But Alabama, this is not a team I want to play. I know, and that's that's the reason why they're in at number four. That's, I mean, if I were Michigan, I'd much rather play Florida State right now than Alabama you know, because Alabama is much more likely to, uh, to beat Michigan, I think. Nick Saban. I mean, a Nick Saban coach team in the postseason is a very dangerous thing. And I mean, so for Alabama, what a chance they have. I really would not be surprised if Alabama out of the four seed won the entire thing at this point. And it all came because of that huge win to Georgia. So, but for Michigan, I mean, it's, it's really now or never for them. I mean, I don't want to say never. I feel like this is as good of a chance as they're going to have for Probably a wild this season with J.J. McCarthy and the way this team has so, so much experience. And obviously, you know, Jim Harbaugh with his uh, bit of an uncertain future at this current point. So a huge game in the Rose Bowl. I mean, this college football playoff is going to be incredible. You got Washington and Texas on the other side. The Huskies, what a season. 13-0, proved everyone wrong, won the uh, Pac-12. And for them to be 10-point under, underdogs in that Pac-12 title game, good for the Huskies there to pull off the win against Oregon and Back to has been an incredible conference this season. I feel like out of any of the conferences this year, Back to has been the most fun to watch. I mean, you got so many really incredible high scoring matchups. The SEC kind of is somewhere in between, and the Big Ten is just too, is, is pretty low scoring, pretty defensive. But the Back to has been incredible in, in every way this season, and it's, uh, it's I think it's just fitting seeing the Pac 12 go as, as it did this season. But Washington, uh, number two, very much deserving. I feel like the Huskies, they're going to be an underdog in this matchup as well, taking on Big 12 champion Texas, who is in the college football playoff for the first time. This team very well could win it all. Uh, they have really turned it on down the stretch and uh, just destroyed Oklahoma State in the Big 12 title game. So uh, Texas will be tough to beat, but the thing is about Washington, they've played a lot of close games down the stretch, but they've always found a way. That's the thing that's dangerous about the Huskies and Michael Penix and this team that – is built around an incredible coaching staff with Kalen DeBoer. Uh, really incredible to see what the Huskies have done this season. And uh, once again, you look at all four teams in the college football playoff, every one of them could definitely win the title this season. Michigan's probably the strongest team. Uh, you got Alabama, who's probably the, who's the biggest dark horse with Nick Saban as the coach. You can never doubt that. And then Texas, obviously a team who's really turned it on down the stretch. And then Washington, who always tends to find a way despite playing a lot of close games. So a lot of really interesting storylines, probably the most, uh, definitely the most intriguing college football playoff, I would say. Uh, it's been a while, probably since the first one back in 2014. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the New Year's Six, the college football playoff and everything. And stay tuned, a lot of content coming this bowl season. We'll be previewing every bowl game like always and uh, giving you guys content along the way as we head into this bowl season. So stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Catch you on the next one.